Our top story is now families of Israeli hostages being held by Hamas in Gaza for the past seven weeks remain unsure overnight when they will next see their loved ones as a planned four-day ceasefire and hostage transfer has been delayed. Hamas has said it would release some captives under an exchange agreement with Israel, but Israel now says that will not happen until tomorrow at the earliest. 50 captives are to be freed from Gaza in exchange for 150 imprisoned Palestinian women and minors, as well as a pause in fighting and desperately needed humanitarian aid, fuel and medical supplies. Well, joining us now is Manuel Hassassian, the former Palestinian ambassador to the UK. Good morning, Manuel. Um, do you think this Good agreement morning. signals towards the beginning of the end to this conflict? I think this is uh, uh, an incremental approach to having eventually a halt on the this naked aggression against the Gazans. I think we are breathing now that there is a hope uh, first of all, to salvage those who are under the rebels, to mourn our martyrs, to allow humanitarian assistance to coming in. I think this was a breaking news for us, and the Palestinian Authority welcomes that with open heart. And we hope that tomorrow the implementation of the exchange uh, of hostages, prisoners, uh, will be taking place. And this cessation of uh, fire will uh, allow the humanitarian assistance to enter into Gaza. And uh, I'm optimistic at least that we have a breakthrough now. And I think this process will continue in the coming four days, let alone other deals should be, you know, done between Hamas and uh, uh, Israel through the Qataris and the Egyptians and the Americans mediation. And that will make us breathe a little bit from the carnage that we see on television every day. Man, well, welcome to talk today. Really appreciate you being on. And one thing that Nick and I have done in the last seven weeks is try to give all sides to this argument. We all have opinions, but I think it's important to get facts out there. I think all of us were shocked to wake up and hear that this deal has been put on hold. Um, is there a danger uh, that any such cessation, as you called it, uh, and a delay becomes political and one side says it's not happening because of them and the other side says it's because of that. Yesterday we heard this was going to happen, then we had people on the Israeli side saying, hold on a second, these people were taken from their beds, they're 50, the others were saying these people have been held in prison, all sorts of things. Is there a danger or do you believe that this is a seminal point and it could prove to be a turning point? Because let's be honest, nobody with a brain cell in the world likes to see what's happening, but I repeat, whether people like it or not, uh, what happened on October the 7th can never happen again. Yes, well, actually, you understand when you negotiate in terms of exchanging of prisoners, it is rather complicated for the simple fact, the time, the venue, uh, the, the process of releasing the prisoners uh, in one way or another complicates the situation. But there is a, a, a mere intention uh, on both sides that this deal has to be done so as to alleviate the miseries on the Gazans, let alone that the Israelis would say that they have accomplished in releasing 50 hostages, you know, taken by Hamas. So I believe in the final analysis that this deal is going to go through. I'm very optimistic that tomorrow all the complications will be solved and the exchange will take place under the auspices uh, of the United Nations and the Red Cross. So let's not be pessimistic and let's not get into polemical words on both sides. Each side is trying basically to win uh, 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 their arguments, their, their narrative and what have you. But in the final analysis, I think both needs a ceasefire now. Um, Manuel, you were former Palestinian ambassador to the UK. What can you, yes. what can you say about the influence that UK politicians have had uh, over the Israel Garda crisis since uh, October the 7th. Do you think there has been much influence felt there by British politicians? Well, let, let me tell you frankly, <laughs> you know, uh, we have to differentiate between the people and those of the, uh, and that of the government. There is a big wedge between, you know, the public opinion and that of the government. Uh, we do understand 
that the United States of America has influence on Britain and vice versa. And we did not expect, you know, radical positions of the of the of the uh, British government when it comes basically to the cessation of fire and what have you. In the beginning, they were all outright for Israel has the right to defend itself. Now we have seen certain kind of changes in the in the attitude of the British government because it is related also to the attitude of change by the United States of America. And we see that there is a certain kind of development. The, the British government is welcoming this ceasefire and they are also now for pushing for humanitarian assistance and what have you. But, you know, it took them like almost 50, 50 days to come up with such a change, what I consider a draconian change from the inception of the onslaught until today. Manuel, yes, I would respectfully, I, I, Manuel, I would respectfully suggest, and, I, and, and it's really good to have you on because it's important to get. I don't think the British government are, are asking for a ceasefire at the moment at all. I think so they're backing always this talk, ceasefire. I don't think this is a ceasefire. It is. It's, it's, is, it's a it's well, cessation I, in. I, I would. I, I would, I would so respectfully that suggest that's half the temporary, problem. It's a temporary. It's a temporary yeah. ceasefire. But I think this is about hostages. The problem is. Yes, it is temporary ceasefire. It is, is it? Temporary that's how they're labelling it, are they? Yes. About holding. Sir, give me the chance just to explain. Yeah, yeah. All I'm saying is that the British government now is in the direction of having a humanitarian uh, pose, mm -hmm. a ceasefire. In the beginning, they were against it. Now, they are for it. Maybe they are not so clear about it, but they are for it. We know from our sources that the British government is in compliance with the United States and Western Europeans in accepting this fire so as to alleviate the miseries of what's happening in Gaza. We cannot say that they are against ceasefire. No, they are for ceasefire, but they are not outright in saying it so far. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much indeed, Manuel. Really important to get your side this morning. Uh, Ex-Palestinian uh, uh, ambassador to the United Kingdom. Thank you very much indeed. Right.